Hi, I'm Jeff Ray, your host for Economic Outlook. Thank you for joining us. We hope you make plans each week to tune in on WNIT, WNIT2, online at WNIT.org, or listen to our podcast of the show on most major podcast platforms. The trip to Indianapolis has gotten much quicker thanks to major improvements to the US 31 corridor over the past 20 years, but there's still work to be done, and we'll hear more about what's next in the corridor coming up on Economic Outlook. Before we get started here at WNIT, we're respecting social distancing and as such, have both our hosts and our guests joining us today virtually instead of in person. The US 31 corridor is a vital transportation link connecting businesses and people to major markets both, both north and south. But much work remains to be completed to finish the goal of a freeway between St. Joe Benton Harbor and Indianapolis. Joining me today for a deeper dive into what's next for the corridor on US 31 are John Leatherman, a real estate professional and former Elkhart County Councilman and former chair of the US 31 coalition. Jill Shikatano, the Director of Industry Growth at the South Bend Elkhart Regional Partnership, and Mike Daigle, the CEO and Executive Director of the South Bend International Airport. Thank you guys for joining me today. Appreciate that. So You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, great great to have you. Kind of a fun discussion. This is a, a topic that uh, we've paid a lot of attention to over the years here. Our viewers are very interested in. US 31 is obviously a, a vital transportation link uh, to, uh, especially to Indianapolis and, uh, and, and also going north. And, and so, uh, uh, so we wanted to just bring you on today, talk to a little bit about why it's important and such. So thanks for doing that. John, I'm gonna come your way because this has been a, a, a passion project for you for quite some time. You've been heavily involved in, in advocating for improvements in the quarter. What, what was it, John, that got you uh, interested and excited about uh, this project early on? Well, that started a long, long time ago, back in the 60s. Uh, we were sitting at a bridge right outside that airport down in, the, in Miami County, and it was a one-lane bridge, and my wife and I were in a car with no air conditioning. We had a baby in the back seat, and we were sitting there and sitting there and sitting there, and my wife said, if you ever do anything, do something about this. So when I got back out of the Army, why, uh, I, I started talking to people, and we formed the US 31 Coalition uh, about 1992-93 and it got really it got really uh, moving then about 96-97 and uh, a lot of people have been involved in trying to make this happen. Uh, Mitch Daniels was really the guy that helped us get it going because uh, when he was uh, when he was governor he, he was concerned about the toll road lease and, and uh, I started out being very much against it, but then after reading up on it and thinking about it, it wasn't a matter of whether or not we should lease it, but how much money we were going to get for it for the state of Indiana. And uh, he pretty much told me, if we get the toll road lease going, we'll help you with 31. And boy, he really did because he's responsible for getting around Kokomo. He's responsible for going from South Bend to Plymouth, and he's responsible for what happened down in Indianapolis. And uh, ever since then, we've been working, you know, daily a lot of times trying to keep this thing moving keep it moving we're 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 uh, uh, competing with about probably 50 or 75 other projects around the state for the for the indot people but uh, the gov governors uh, from Mitch Daniels on have been very su supportive and we're we're appreciative of that Great. John I want to just go back real quick to on on this coalition so years ago um, a, a bunch of like-minded people came together help, help me understand you, you know who's some of those people or, 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 you know, where, where they were from, what kind of, uh, you know, jobs they, you know, what, what's it take to drive a project like this forward? Who are the folks that came together to, to really make it happen? Well, the St. Joe County uh, and Elkhart County groups uh, got together and uh, uh, we, we started out meeting uh, Pat McMahon and, and, and others who were working in Elkhart County, Phil Penn and some people are working in, in, in Elkhart County, uh, got together and just started having meetings. And after a couple of years, we decided we better get a professional about this. So we, uh, we hired Dennis Falkenberg to, uh, to kind of guide us in what we're doing. And Dennis was um, a former INDOT person down in Indianapolis who really knows a lot about this. And once, uh, once Dennis got there, things started to take off and and um, we've been we've been very thankful for all the help we've gotten up and down the corridor ever since. And, and one last, and I promise I'm coming your way, Jill and, and Mike. So so John, um, I, I, I'll just ask a, a weird question. So so um, you're not even in 
um, you, you know, your county doesn't even connect to the road. Why would uh, why would something like this be a priority if if your county isn't doesn't connect directly to the road? Well, our county is really involved heavily in manufacturing. Uh, most uh, counties have eight, 10 percent of their people maybe in manufacturing. We have over 50 percent of our people in manufacturing. To give you an example. Last year, we built 650,000 RVs in Elkhart County alone. And it takes a lot of suppliers and a lot of people working really hard in manufacturing to do that. And that means we got to get a lot of product in. That means we got to get a lot of product built and then get a lot of product out. So the Chambers of Commerce, which is where we started this, uh, have been very helpful. And, and, and it was interesting that uh, as this thing progressed, we kind of came together with St. Joe County. We were butting heads for years and years and years and years. But once this got going, people in St. Joe County, people in Elkhart County started to be friends. And we really, we really got uh, a, a lot of momentum uh, and, and got a lot of things done. Yeah. Great. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. I'll come back your way, but I'm going to uh, loop the others two into it. Jill, let me come your way for a second. So you, you have this role of being, you know, kind of one of the chief salespeople for our area, trying to attract uh, you know, new jobs, new investment, uh, um, capital investment in our area. D just talk a little bit about um, why a project like US 31 matters uh, to the work that you're doing. Yep, sure. Thanks for having me today, Jeff. Um, you know, over the past decade, um, you know, we've come a long way and made a lot of progress as a region. And it's certainly important that um, we think about the implications of a freeway or a safe and effective route um, between one of our fourth, our fourth largest city and Indianapolis and what that means to our businesses. You know, if this part of the state is gonna fr thrive in the years to come, I mean, having this connectivity in, in this fashion is certainly important. Uh, we think about the impact of hundreds of businesses um, that are right here, located right here, and how this impacts their ability to move products and materials back and forth through this corridor, um, critically important. Um, you know, governors have been talking about this for the past 20 years, uh, making US 31 a highway. And uh, we know there's bottlenecks and these bottlenecks certainly impact those businesses and their ability to do what they need to, um, but it certainly also has impacts on our ability to attract additional investment um, for both new and existing businesses. Great, thanks, Jill. And we're going to come back your way too. So, so Mike, I want to uh, loop you in here to this conversation. So, uh, so, so you run the airport. Um, what is a guy that that that's worrying about uh, planes, you know, landing and and taking off? Why does he worry about uh, the construction of a of a highway? Boy, you know, that's a that's a great leading question, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for including me. So, uh, I have the privilege and honor of running South Bend International Airport with tremendous talented folks. But we also are working for our community. And the last economic study showed that the airport had a $1.7 billion impact on our local economy. And that's not staying at the airport. That's connecting to all of our local counties, Southwest Michigan. It just continues to grow and do that. We focus on economic development regularly, not just passenger air service, one of the key factors that we're identifying and we're trying to grow is air cargo. We know that our businesses that thrive and grow in our region, they need supply lines. They need the ability to get freight in and out. We need to be able to get products that are completed, built, or uh, manufactured in our area. Those need to get out also. Again, they're going to go by rail. They're going to go by highway. They're going to go by air. We need to put all of that together. So that's part of why um, I think the airport fits into this US 31. And safety and security are paramount in everything that we do. And if you can look at now, we would be able to connect from I-94 down through the US 31 bypass to a true four lane highway down to Indianapolis. That would be amazing. We did a study a couple of years ago, and, and I know you're aware of it, Jeff, we found that within one day's trucking drive of the South Bend Airport, there's 171 million people that we can reach in one day's trucking drive. So if you can make that improvement from here to Indianapolis, we can have an even larger reach from that. We have the toll road, that's terrific. It goes obviously east-west and, and everything else. The connection going up north also to 94 would also help continue to get that freight, not just into the US, but possibly into Canada too. Great, thanks, Mike. Jill, I'm going to come back your way. So, so as you're out on the road, you're meeting with 
you know, site selectors, companies that are thinking about, you know, coming to the area, um, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, some of the, some of the questions they're asking about the area and again, why, why a, a project like this is so critical. Yeah, I, you know, I think, you know, one of the key things and key themes we always hear about is what, what is the access to major markets and what does that look like and how are we able to move products and services through there efficiently and effectively. So thinking about we're, we're uniquely positioned here. I mean, uh, Mike alluded to it uh, just a minute ago, but a half day's drive puts us um, within reach to four major population centers, Detroit, Chicago, Cleveland, uh, and Indianapolis. So those are really critical factors that come into play, certainly when they're looking at relocation critical fact or become critical factors, um, and all these play into part, uh, play a part in the decision ultimately. Great, thanks, thanks, Jill. I'm gonna come back your way in a second. John, let me come back to you for a second. And, and so you mentioned in your early comments that, uh, about the support from the state and the governors who have, have been provided important leadership. So, so, so a lot of people think this is done, right? So, so you, you knocked a lot of time off of it. You got the bypass around, you know, Kokomo, this two hour and 20 minute trip used to be three hours, you know, something. So, so what, what's left to be done in the quarter? I thought we were almost there. Well, we've got probably 150 driveways and, and other access points to the highway between South Bend and Indianapolis. And we've got cross streets uh, and really we've got a lot of traffic uh, and, and you, you can't take the traffic on it on an all day basis, but in the early morning and the late afternoon, that thing is packed. And right now it's, it's almost as much a question of safety as it is anything else. I mean, there's people getting killed out there because they stop at a stoplight, the truck comes and hits hits a behind, not expecting to have a stoplight. Uh, I was I was driving down there three or four years ago, and I saw the bus that got hit by the truck, and the kid got killed because the bus had to stop at a railroad crossing. So, those kinds of things, in in, in spite of the studies and everything that's going on, those kinds of things need to be fixed, and they need to be fixed right now. Uh, the two railroad crossings are really critical. Uh, 10, where 10 intersects with uh, uh, 31, most accidents you could possibly imagine. Uh, there's a lot of them down by the airport in Miami County. And, and, and that kind of stuff can get fixed without a huge study. All they need to do is put in some interchanges and so forth. Uh, and, and they say, well, it's gonna take years to do that. Well, I saw what happened in Tipton County when that factory got finally leased uh, down there. <laughs> Man, we had an interchange in there in six months. So it's not a question of time. And now it's not even a question of money because the state's going to start giving back taxes. And, and they've got huge, huge amounts of money coming in from the federal government. So if we're ever going to get this finished and finished right, now's the time to do it. It's really, at this point, it's almost a, a safety thing that can't be ignored. Yep. So, so John, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to let you be governor here for for a quick second, and 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 uh, so so I-69 is an important state priority. I-65 has a lot of traffic that that goes um, north. For, that Indy to Chicago is, is so so again. Talk about just just maybe how to prioritize maybe the dollars available and how, and how to prioritize or advance this next piece. Well, the, the issue is finish what you start. Uh, you know, Governor Daniels said, we're going to do this. And every governor since then has said, we're going to work on a freeway. We're going to get it done. And they've done a lot of really good work. Uh, and I won't say 65 or 69 or 70 are, are important, but you got to recognize the fact that between South Bend, Mishawaka, Elkhart, and Goshen, that's probably the second biggest economic engine in the state of Indiana. And we need good connection to our, to our state capital. And we need a safe, road to drive on. I mean, I've, I've gone out there, I'm trying to keep the speed limit, people are passing me. So I go up to 80, people are passing me. I mean, it's, it's, it's really fast and it's really not safe the way it is right now when you got, when you got people going across, we call them shooters. Uh, you know, you see them up there and they try to shoot across in front of you before, before you get to the intersection. Uh, we've got to take care of the farmers. We've got to make sure the farmers can get across back and forth, so there, there need to be some overpasses. 
but those those critical spots where all the uh, accidents have been taking have been happening, those are the places we need to focus on, and we need to do it right now. Yeah, thank you, John. And you you highlighted two of those are in our viewing area at, at 10 and, and the intersection of 10 and US 31 and, and the intersection of 110 and US 31, two of those in Marshall County, also the Fulton County piece still needs it. So I appreciate you drawing some attention to that. Um, Mike mentioned earlier when we were talking to him about the importance of going north as well too and about the improvements that are happening um, up near St. Joe Benton Harbor on 31 as connects to I-94. We're gonna leave the studio for a second and uh, give you a brief update on that project. I'm gonna toss it to them. We're on westbound I-94 um, in the middle of the US-31 I-94 interchange and reconnection project and we are building westbound 94 and several bridges this season. This is a Rebuilding Michigan project. The Rebuilding Michigan program funded about 94 million of the $122 million it takes to build this project. And without the Rebuilding Michigan program, this wouldn't be happening. Well, across this section, we're gonna rebuild uh, westbound 94 this year. We're gonna connect US 31, which comes up from the Indiana-Michigan state line. We're gonna connect between Napier Avenue and I-94 and construct the new interchange between US 31 and I-94. As part of that project, we're also building four new bridges and doing one bridge rehabilitation. Well, it's very unique that we're building some new freeway grade. That doesn't happen very often in Michigan anymore. So that section of 31 that's not built yet from Napier Avenue up to I-94 is a new freeway alignment. A unique thing that we don't get to do very often and we're excited to be a part of it. It's been a long time coming, decades in fact. Um, I have one senior technician who's been with the department roughly 30 years. One of his very first projects was US 31 at the Indiana-Michigan State Line. He's nearing the end of his career now and he gets to finish this one as sort of the capstone on a good career. It's been great. There's been a lot of community involvement. We have great contractors and great partners, um, both in the consulting world and in the contracting world and everything's just coming together. We're on time, we're on budget so far, um, and it's looking good. We should, be, ha we should have westbound 994 open for traffic by Thanksgiving of this year. We actually received an email from a lady who drives through here regularly with her kids, and her kids are really excited to see all the earth moving equipment and all the construction going on, and it's obviously it's hot all summer long and the guys are working very hard, and so she reached out wanting to thank the construction crews asking to bring cookies and drinks, and we're just waiting to make that happen. All right, we're back in the studio here. Uh, thanks for the quick update from MDOT on the, the work happening north. What a, what a great project, and it opens up such a, a nice network uh, going up into, into northern Michigan and connects us into some key transportation quarters. I want to come back here and, and maybe hit on a theme. John, you mentioned earlier uh, just kind of the partnership involved early on to sort of get the momentum behind this. Jill, I think you know from from your standpoint, you're 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 in, in right in the in the hot seat in, in terms of, of regional partnerships. Your organization's been able to accomplish some some great things because of bringing people together. Uh, maybe Jill, talk a little bit about the the value in that that collaboration and the power of of partnership. Yeah, you know we're really fortunate because we have a lot of great uh, representatives around the table that have such an, a broad. Uh, focused and expertise that um, we're able to really be a true strong competing uh, mechanism that really brings people together to focus on those assets that are most critical and those topics and themes that are most critical to all of our success. So whether we're uh, a city, a county, um, or working together, we're, we're constantly um, really focused on how we can bring everything together and, and maximize our assets to um, help make some improvements and, and ultimately um, support our businesses and, and the growth of our uh, communities. Great, and, and Mike, I wanna come your way because you you obviously cover a broad footprint, although you're physically located here in the in the heart of St. Joseph County, you have partners from all over the region that, that are, are, are part of, you know, maybe expound on, on what Jill was saying and, and talk about what, what you've seen in terms of the, the value of that collaborative effort and, and how it helps advance things. 
So one of the things that you do is we do serve a regional uh, population. And so we work with folks up in St. Joe and Benton Harbor and Southwest Michigan. Uh, we do some work out in the Michigan city area, out in the city of Elkhart and the county of Elkhart, down in Plymouth and Marshall County. Uh, again, we serve a very large region uh, from one central location. We know that collectively we need to speak with all of them. We need to focus with all of them and understand what the needs are to do that. As I go around and I talk to people in all of these communities, they all want several things together. They want safety when they travel, whether it's by car, whether it's by airplane or whatever else, and how do we accomplish that? And there's many, many things. And, and John talked about it and, and so did Jill. We have to figure out how to work together to do what we need to have and talk to the people that can make it happen. And we got to get input from our local leaders, get input from our communities, and then from there develop what is a good comprehensive regional strategy for going to move this to completion. John, I think back to you know what you were sharing with us earlier about you know kind of the collaboration that that happened, and, and much of this doesn't happen without the you know kind of the the constant uh, beat of the drum you know for this as a priority and and my guess is that the work you started um 20 and 30 years ago um you know still still has some important work to do so 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 what's the effort look like now how do we make sure that us 31 is high on the list of our legislators of the governor of the folks that are making the funding decision what's what's that effort look like now well, we, ha we have to continue to talk about it. We have to make sure that the general public understands that it's not finished. It's, it's, it's half finished or maybe three quarters finished in some spots, but uh, we've still got serious uh, safety problems all the way up and down that quarter. We got a huge growth problem in Miami County around the airport. That whole thing is, could, could just uh, expand tremendously if we had a freeway. Uh, we've seen the same thing happen down in uh, Tipton County, where things, things are starting to move. Uh, so it, it's critically important that the governor, the governor's staff, the folks at NDOT, and all of our legislators understand that South Bend, Mishawaka, Elkhart, and Goshen are all on one page, and we're all going in the same direction. And, and we need to make sure they know it isn't done. I mean, a lot of people go, well, hey, we got around Kokomo, so everything's fine. But that's not that's not at all what's happening. So uh, we thank everybody that supports us. But I think we have to remember there's another 50 or 60 or 75 projects all around the state of Indiana, all wanting money, all wanting in dot to work on them right now. And, and the only way that we can make sure that the, the that we get get attention is to continually talk about it and work on it. The, the coalition now is putting out a, a, a biweekly thing on the Internet to talk about accidents and traffic and safety and all those kinds of things. And so if, if, uh, if anybody wants to be on that list, why well, have him get a hold of Jeff and he can, he can make that connection because that's, it's really interesting when you, when you look at it, it's really interesting to see what's really going on. Great. Thanks, John. Mike, I'm going to come your way. So the federal government um, recently passed the new infrastructure bill, recognizing that investment in roads and rail and air and, and all this is critical. Talk about what act in our last two minutes here about um, what action like that out of D.C. might mean for uh, for projects like this. So we know that a large amount of these projects actually uh, have the ability to compete for federal funds and help us do that. We've seen some bills over the last couple of years that have really helped uh, identify that infrastructure need, have helped identify how we prepare for our future. And our future, again, is tied back to the safety improvements needed for US 31. It, again, goes back to serving our communities and being able to do that. Now, we have people from across the country in communities similar to ours who are also competing for all those federal dollars. And so we have to be vocal. We have to stand together. We have to get the state folks to understand the importance of it so that they can also communicate the same to D.C. It's great when we communicate with our elected officials in D.C. and we can do that. When the state goes in and says the same thing on top of it, now it solidifies what the first person said and you're more apt to find progress in the direction you want to go. 
we've seen it very recently with uh, some of the South Shore Rail project and the double tracking over the last couple of years and some of the dollars that have come that way. Um, the project's not done. We still have more work to do. But again, collectively, the communities working together gets us there. Jill, I'm going to give you the last word. I got about a minute left uh, to wrap up. So, you, you know, you, we've had some great conversation today about, you know, kind of this sort of if, if you were wrapping up, summarizing, helping our audience better understand what, what would be your, la your final message to them? Yeah, I, you know, I think we've all come a long way. We know there is a lot of work to do, um, but I think we need to understand what the implications of the progress of, of um, this thoroughfare can mean to our businesses for those existing, but also those new ones as well. Um, as we look at the growth of our companies and, and the support that we can provide for them, um, you know, uh, infrastructure improvements like this can make all the difference. Um, and we want safe and effective um, projects on the horizon. We know that there is a study underway for uh, US 31, which is great news. We also know that those take a lot of time. So what can we do in the meantime to really um, help get some of those projects that were promised initially done? And then how can we really be top of mind to make sure those funds that are uh, available do get appropriated to completing US 31? Great, thank you so much. The, actually, thanks to all of you. What a great conversation, appreciate it. We're gonna have to wrap it uh, at that. That's it for our show today. Thank you for watching on WNIT or listening to our podcast. To watch this episode again and any of our past episodes, you can find Economic Outlook at WNIT.org or find our podcast on most major podcast platforms. We also encourage you to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. I'm Jeff Ray, I'll see you next week. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.